Welcome back to another video. My name is Dollywop and today I'm happy to introduce a new series for the channel. Looking at the list of legendaries, it is abundantly clear that not all legends are created equal. Some have deep lore and intricate ties to the Pokemon world that makes them integral to its very existence, and others are just kinda guys. In each of these videos, I'll be going over certain legends and giving them a fresh coat of paint. Without changing their backstories too much, I hope to tie them closer to the world, enhance their stories, and give them a reason to actually exist. Most importantly, I want to give a reason why you consider these Pokémon legendary. From the title alone, you can see we're going to be starting with the legendary birds. Note, this is only the Cantonian legendary birds. The Galar forms will get their own video. Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. In terms of design, personality, and power, at least in Gen 1, these three kill it. They are everything a legendary Pokémon should be. The only thing they're missing is lore and purpose. Yeah, they have legendary presence, but why are they in this world? Because we need strong birds? According to the anime slash movie, Professor Oak states that Articuno and Moltres' combined power of ice and fire are the source and cradle of the oceans, and that Zapdos' electric energy creates the currents and streams, which is why the three are closely bound to the guardian of the ocean, Lugia. That's cool, but it doesn't really work anymore. We have Kyogre, who's the source of the ocean, and I don't even know at this point how Manaphy ties into all this. I mean, I guess I could try and adapt it in, but I've got better ideas. Time for a little story time. When the world was new, power ran rampant. The weather trio had each formed the land, sea, and sky, while Pokemon like Regigigas was towing the continents into place and Lugia was helping shape the currents of the ocean. Legendary Pokemon were using their powers to give life to this world. Unintentionally, life would form without their hands to guide it. From the natural energy that permeated the world, three elements were given shape. Fire, ice, and lightning gained consciousness and each took the form of a powerful bird. They were dubbed Moltres, Articuno, and Zapdos. However, to give something shape does not give it morality. The three birds fought each other for territory, clashing with their great power. Each bird's mere presence was enough to warp the weather around it to their liking, destroying the climate. Their battles brought destruction to the newly created world, halting the progress that was being made. Lugia, newly appointed guardian of the sea, was the one to finally cease their battle. Its power over storms cut through their weather, and its song soothed their battle-hungry spirits. A question rang out amongst the legends if they would need to seal the birds away, but Lugia had a solution. Regigigas was asked to move three islands into place. From there, Lugia took the birds and split them into three parts. Two parts were of the bird themselves. One half was bound to the islands that Regigigas provided, giving them each a territory to rule over. The other half was free to roam the world, altering the weather wherever they flew. When on their own, their ability to alter the weather helped keep the climate in balance all around. The last piece contained most of their primal power. Three orbs, one for each bird, were made from the raw elemental energy the birds drew strength from. They were used as keystones to bind the birds to the islands, lest they seek out their roaming halves to cause even more destruction. And there we go! I want to add a little note here before I get into my reasoning. If I mention other legendaries in my little stories and you think, hey, that legendary can't do that, or that's not how that works, well, that's how it works in my little legendary lore. All things considered, this is an alternate world. I can't actually change the Pokemon canon, I'm just having fun. Anyways, let's go over my reasoning. For the lore, the birds had two things that really drew me in. First was the movies. In their debut movie, their battling was so bad that it risked destroying the world. The capture of one was enough to throw the world's climate out of control. Ignoring that a man in an airship can capture a Pokemon strong enough to affect the climate of the world and destroy it, the movies made me want to give a reason for why they were so powerful. Making them embodiments of the actual elements of lighting, ice, and fire seemed like the best way to go. It gives them an origin while also justifying their power. One thing the legendary birds have that most of these lower trios don't is that they truly embody their elements. I can look at all three birds and readily agree that these are masters of lightning, ice, or fire. However, the games don't really do them justice in terms of power. I know I don't need to consider the games, as most Pokemon's dex entries don't reflect their in-game abilities. And for the most part, I won't be doing that for most of these legends. Nonetheless, it helped inspire me to split the birds into three. It makes them weak enough to justify their current power and leads me into giving them a purpose. The spheres that were connected to the birds are so random. So making them a piece of the bird's power contained, as well as a way to lock them to the islands, was interesting to me. Now, locking the birds to the islands due to their strength was great, but that meant they were just really strong Pokemon locked to islands. It was great lore, but they didn't tie them to the world in any significant way. That's when I had the second thing that drew me in, Lugia. As we stated at the top, the small bit of lore we got for the birds doesn't work in context with newer Pokemon. So why is Lugia, Guardian of the Seas, Master of Storms, their trio head? 
Well, with its control over the wind and ability to make storms, I think it could overpower the weather conditions the birds unintentionally were creating with their power. Then it used its song to soothe their hunger for battle. I wanted the birds to still serve a purpose to the world, so having Lugia split part of them to go roam the planet and change the weather seemed like a good idea. That sort of fits into them balancing the climate like they did in the movies. Also, a lot of their deck entries bring up the subject of weather, so it was a no-brainer. And anyways, most legendaries that affect the weather don't have it as their main job. It's simply a part of their power or to help them do their other jobs. That meant the job of keeping the climate in check was kind of open to the birds. And I think we can all agree that these three should have gotten weather setting abilities. I mean, snow cloak, static, and flame body? Get the heck out of here. Now these three have a story to their existence, we bumped them up in power, we made it believable why they weren't as strong now, and we gave them a job that helps keep the planet running. That'll conclude our first episode of Legendary Lore. How'd you like it? Did I make these guys more interesting, or was this a bomb? If you have a legendary that you think deserves more lore and purpose, let me know who it is and why down below. I have a lot of these planned out already, but hey, I might have missed one that you guys really love. If you go to my community page now, there's a little poll on what legend I should do next. I consider doing these in order, but I decided to leave the vote up for you guys. Look forward to the next episode coming soon. Follow me on Twitter for updates, like, subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.